So what is an artifact anyway? The basic textbook definition is an object made by humans. Artifact is kind of an abstract term to the average person, and it's already to say to some archaeologists too. I like to think of artifacts as a type of language. Language is defined as a method of human communication. Well, that really is what artifacts do too. I would like to propose that artifacts are actually words, and you can only discern the meaning from other words around them. Words form sentences, sentences make paragraphs, paragraphs make chapters, and chapters make a history of a people at a particular time and place in the form of an archaeological site. So each archaeological site is really a history book about a particular people or peoples at a specific place in a particular span of time. The key to understanding these histories is from the associations or what archaeologists call context. The way the artifacts are clustered together in the sentence allows the observer to understand their meaning and function and usage. Also vital to this understanding is what we call scale. Let me illustrate this with some examples. A prehistoric person sits down to make a waterproof basket. They gather the plant and or animal materials, some bone awls, gather some tar, pebbles to roll in the tar, a fire pit to heat the tar unless you're in Ojai in the summer, a tar masher, not my term, but you get the point, the occasional abalone shell to hold the tar or a stone bowl. Okay, so all these artifacts together form a small scale context in which the artifacts were found within maybe 100 square feet. These examples can be seen at the Ojai Valley Museum. Another example is acorn gathering and processing. There's a grove of oak trees covering 20 acres where people brought baskets, grinding stones, stone mortars, and pestles, spreading across the grove in small groups to harvest and process the acorns. The context in this situation is very large and covers 20 acres. What appears to be randomly placed artifacts is actually a structured activity area on a large scale. These activity areas or assemblages are really chapters in how Native American lives were shaped and lived, and they effectively communicate to us what their lives were like from the recent past to many thousands of years ago. Sometimes you can spot an individual's efforts by the unique way they manufacture something, like an arrowhead where the flake scars form a particular pattern that is replicated over and over again by the same individuals or members of the same tribe or village. The same with certain baskets, although baskets don't survive well in this context. I remember once coming across a small site about two square feet in the mountains that consisted of a type of stone called chert, an especially shaped rock we know was used as a hammer stone, plus small flakes that had been knocked off of the chert as the person made a stone tool possibly an arrowhead. I was in awe that I got to see an individual at a specific task and place. In my own mind, I could see that that person sitting there carefully chipping away at the shirt core, forming a tool. You can see examples of this at an exhibit at the Alvin Group Museum in Ventura. These histories are complicated by the fact that activities sometimes overlap each other, and the position of each artifact is critical in determining what was going on. When you have thousands of years of history at the same place, it becomes more difficult to discern patterns and establish what was happening. For example, picture a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle scattered across the ground. A hundred years later, throw another jigsaw puzzle on the ground on top of the first one, and so on for a thousand years. Don't forget the random dog that wandered by, ate some of the pieces, and then redeposited them, if you get my drift, in an area a hundred feet away. Archaeologists spent thousands of hours sorting this information out. They plot each artifact, catalog them, and slowly sort out the patterns into sentences and paragraphs. This sometimes takes years, but technological advances provide more and new types of information, and so the stories continue to unfold, and we become better at understanding our past. Archaeologists and our native partners do it because we know that these artifacts are our only history of these people, and that history forms the identity for those who died as well as those living today. One last thing, when people remove an artifact or even move it, they disrupt or destroy the context, and they are disrespecting the past of a people that may be thousands of years old and effectively robbing a people of their identity. The people of the past and the present deserve to have their stories told, and that will only happen if we as a people preserve our precious past so that it can be read by future generations. 
Thank you for watching. So for all of you wannabe archaeologists out there, let's see how sharp your identification skills are for artifacts. And the next clip you're going to see is going to be an artifact that was found in Ventura County. And I'd like you to see if you can identify it. Leave your comments below. Thanks very much, and we'll see you on the next one.